Okay. You guys hear me? Okay. Bear with me because Dan's such a good speaker and I'm not. <laughs> but, okay. So my lesson today, I was listening to a song the other day and I thought, you know, I'll just write about that song. And so I, I'm not going to sing the lyrics I'm going to talk about right now, but I'll just say them and then go from there. So the song says, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, longing to have more of you and you have more of me. Words fail me, I don't know how, to express my desire to be closer to you. But I'm here now, with my hands lifted high and with tears in my eyes I cry. Consume me with your fire, consume me with your fire, burn in my heart and burn in my heart. And so that made me think, um, what consumes us? And I gave some ideas. I said, is it our body image, our grades, our work status, our bank account, what people think of us, an addiction, sports, comparison, jealousy, regret, fear, and the list goes on and on. So many things consume our time, energy, emotions, our brains, and our hearts. We know we need to have Jesus first, but sometimes it's easy to push him into second, third, fourth, and that can go on as well. Sometimes I struggle with bringing things to God and feel very close to him. This song reminded me that I have to surrender everything and come to him and drop my own agenda. And I like in the song when it says, but I'm here now, because the word but is saying, like it's starting an action, like, but I'm here now, and I'm going to do something about it. So um, don't stay stuck where you are, and don't feel like there's a requirement you have to meet before you can meet him. You can do it right now. And then it goes into, with my hands lifted high and tears in my eyes, I cry, consume me with your fire and burn in my heart. And that made me think that fire consumes everything, and as it does, the fire gets bigger. Jesus is the fire, and when, he gives, when we give everything to him, he grows in us and replaces our voids, and we will feel so much better, and he will use us more and more. Nothing feels better than when you feel the Spirit filling you with passion and love, which is his fire. When Jesus is the fuel burning in your heart, it won't burn out like everything else will at some point. So my takeaway this week is for you to ask yourself, what is consuming you, and will you give those things to God and ask him to fill you with more of him instead? And that's my lesson. <laughs> Um, share back with God what, what's in our hearts. And so as we worship him, I just invite you to stand. Um, okay, and then would you just make eye contact, kind of wave at somebody? Because sometimes you can go to church and you sit in your little space and you don't really just, so just, hey, glad you're here, that kind of thing. So... <laughs> All right, this is 10,000 Reasons.
instrumental here. Next song we're going to do a cappella, and it is Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his cross. Precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. me to victory beneath the planting flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. Somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory, Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me. Me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about the mansion he is built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. That was beautiful. <laughs> You may be seated. (laughs) 
morning, everybody. Um, Lucas is going to get to the prayers and announcements here pretty soon. But I wanted to just make an announcement here first, um, kind of to go over the technology discussion we've been having with the elders. In the interest of transparency, we thought everybody should know about it. And in the interest of unity, we're going to have a vote on this here in a couple weeks. So I'm going to kind of lay out what we've been talking about as far as the technology goes. Pastor Ben's going to offer his thoughts. And then if you have any further questions, you can get a hold of me if it's about the system, or you can get a hold of Lucas if it's how we're going to pay for it. And he's going to have the details there. So um, kind of some background on where we're at right now. We began posting our sermons and services on YouTube during the COVID-19 shutdown kind of last spring. And we had a lot of problems trying to live stream over the summer due to multiple issues. First of all, we had a really slow internet connection and that has been more recently upgraded to have a new router and a new exterior receiver with Glenwood broadband. So that's not an issue anymore. Um, kind of the crux of the issue currently is the camera that we currently have is a low definition camera or standard definition camera. And there is an inability to get the digital signal directly from the camera and into the computer that we currently have. So we're attempting to, we were, when we were live streaming, we were live streaming an image of an image that was very poor quality and very undependable. Um, as I said, the camera is low definition and does not have the appropriate hookups to get a signal directly into our computer without a significant, quote, patching of things together with an adapter kit. Um, an adapter kit and wiring would cost about $2,500, which would allow streaming, but it would be still be low definition and would be a very poor quality, uh, about equal to what we're doing now. Um, currently, what we're doing is we're recording the low definition signal onto a DVD, and then we're posting that DVD onto YouTube later, uh, which we've been doing over the past several months. And uh, average weekly viewings, we've been getting 15 to 40 views per week on our videos that we posted. So there are some people watching it. Um, I, I've spoken and corresponded with a guy named Greg Sales. He's with Yonda Music out of Kearney. And he actually was part of the installation of the current system. And so he's worked with our church before and understands the limitations of our current system. Um, so what I'm going to talk about now is what he recommends as, quote, the fix for our situation. Um, if we are to live stream our services, we need to upgrade our existing camera to a high definition camera. Basically, the existing one is an obsolete technology. Uh, he also recommends pairing the new camera with a video streaming studio called Mobilecast. This would incorporate directly with the HD camera, with the soundboard, and with our existing laptop to enable us to put together a very high quality video production. Um, if you'd like to see further examples of what we're doing now versus what we could be doing with this system, you can see me at a later time. Um, the mobile cast would allow the operator to control the camera right from the video production hardware. The mobile cast would allow us to live stream simultaneously to Facebook and YouTube, so multiple channels at the same time. And the mobile cast would allow us to do a picture in picture on our video. So, for example, it would show the speaker, but could have an inset of the screen as well, so you could see if there's a PowerPoint or lyrics at the same time as the speaker is speaking. Um, the mobile cast will take up to four input cameras. The proposal that I got included one to two cameras. Um, he, this Greg Sales assures us this is a top of the line unit so we could do one camera now and add further cameras later if we so choose. The mobile cast will record our video to an SD card which is just a little card that's pretty small, and that would be used as the hard copy like the DVDs that are currently being used. Um, this plan saves us substantial money over the cobbling of the cables required to, to upgrade our current setup. 
Um, the mobile cast would also allow us to do away with all of our DVD equipment that's currently back there, as well as the camera controller equipment that's being used. Um, he reports that the mobile cast is very user friendly and easy to operate, and it would work side by side with our existing lap laptop and our existing soundboard. We would, however, need at least two people in the booth each week, to, one to run the laptop and one to run the Lyric and PowerPoint projection. And one, uh, one to run the laptop, which runs the Lyrics and PowerPoints, and the other to run the mobile cast. Um, the proposal, as he wrote it, includes all the equipment and the associated cables need to, needed to install it. It includes all the labor to install the new system, including running new cable over to the fellowship hall. And it includes training people to run the mobile cast unit in order to be able to live stream our services. The price tag for the new HD camera and the mobile cast unit with installation for one camera would be $12,629. If we decided to do a second camera that would sit approximately halfway up in the sanctuary, the cost would increase to $14,578. So that is the physical side of the proposal. We also need to consider the spiritual side of it. If we are only doing this for our absent members during this coronavirus shutdown, I believe that's the wrong motivation. If on the other hand we're doing it to extend the reach of our church by taking the gospel to people who need to hear it and to further God's kingdom, then I believe it's a worthy investment. The elders have spoken at our most recent meeting and it is our desire to make it be a difference maker in our community and a light to our larger area. We believe that this is a way not only to do that, but also to grow our church. We would like to upgrade this part of our technology to be able to, to be a part of a much greater effort for outreach and for building God's kingdom locally and around the world. Yes, the price tag is large, but how can we put a price tag on the human soul if even one person comes to Christ based on our videos? In my personal opinion, if Salem is going to be a, remain relevant in our community and in our world, we need to, a quality online presence. This technology upgrade would definitely be a step in the right direction. And if we're truly looking to know Christ and to make him known, it would enable us to extend the reach beyond these four walls. It is not the only step we need to take, but it would be an invaluable resource for outreach. So now I'd like to turn it over to Pastor Ben for a few thoughts on the proposal, and then we'll move into our prayers of the people and announcement time. So like Chris said, this number is a lot of money. $12,600 is no small thing. But I think we need to think of it as an investment and not just as money spent, an investment in Salem and our future together. As little as 10 years ago, if somebody became interested in Salem, they would first know someone from the church, most likely, but then their initial experience would be when they walked through the front door, where they would be greeted, then walk between where the coat racks used to be, and into our little narthex. The initial experience people had was highly dependent on friendly people greeting them, and I think that's something we did a good job of. That ensured that a person's first impression of Salem would be a favorable one. 